Yay. All right. Another episode of Brand on Fire podcast. And today, you guys, this is special because this is my first interview podcast, by the way. And we have such an amazing guest. I love this woman to death. <laughs> Her name is Kathy Underwood. She is a spiritual teacher, an author, teaches about money metaphysics, like living your most true, bad bitch, authentic life, everything. Um, Cassie, I'll let you tell the audience a little bit more about you. And then we're just going to dive in and how all of your beautiful, amazing, expansive work really helps contribute to building amazing businesses. So tell us a little bit more. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me and what an honor to be the first interview. I had no idea. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that piece. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. Start with the best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll <No pressure>. see. <laughs> All right, girl. So, um, my name is Cassie Underwood, and I am uh, a writer. I am a mother, and I am an accidental entrepreneur as a spiritual teacher. That was a real big surprise for me, as I realized that it was my calling to be a spiritual teacher. That I realized, oh my gosh, I'm also going to have to start a business in order for me to make these offerings to people. Um, so it feels like it was a total accident, um, but I actually love it. I love business. It turns out it really it was like an itch that needs to needed to be scratched for me. Um, I was Harvard's first ever meditation advisor. I have a master's in divinity from Harvard Divinity School. And I wrote a book called May Cause Love, An Unexpected Journey of Enlightenment After Abortion. Um, and I am the founder of a mastermind called Money Metaphysics for Maverick Women. Love it. She just glossed over. I, you know, was the meditation director at Harvard. Harvard. <laughs> Amazing. Well, well, I created the, I created the position. So yeah, but still, but still, and like you guys are just in for such a treat, like not only, well, Cassie impart wisdom and, and, and information, but her spirit and her, just her grace is such a pleasure to be around and be in, in the energy of. So um, let's just dive in here. Like what, what do you think is like one of the most important things for women to know when it comes to money metaphysics and business and creation from like from that place? That's such a good question. I think that for me, what has been so important is knowing that business is a spiritual journey. It's actually been the most ass kicking spiritual journey of my life. And I have been, I'm sober from drugs and alcohol 15 years. I have a child. I'm a single mother. Nothing has kicked my ass and required me to become someone with boundaries, who lives my truth, who has to work with metaphysics and energy in order to achieve success more than this. Mm -hmm. And so really having my daily practices, really know, knowing and understanding that any unresolved trauma will come up in, in my business. And you can like, like the truth is sobriety is a fucking miracle. Can we uh, cuss on this podcast? Yeah, it's it's going to be marked as explicit. So carry oh, on. Please. <laughs> all of my interviews need to be marked as explicit. Uh -huh. So um, like sobriety is a fucking miracle. Um, and people can, you can kind of like, you can be sober and do like the 12 steps bare minimum, right. And still like have, have it. You can still have sobriety, even if you, you know, you're kind of like limping along and you can still show up at the meetings. You can be a parent and get away with being, you know, a, a parent who doesn't deal with the way that their childhood trauma is showing up in their parenting. Yes. You cannot be a business owner <laughs> and be successful and have uh, and actually be sustainable without dealing with all of the triggers, all of the resentments, all of the fears that you have, you have to face them. And so for me, it's really been, um, it's really been a journey of, of breaking free of codependency, speaking my truth and transforming my relationship with money. Amazing. I couldn't agree with you more because it's like, 
you have to be open to receiving, like you said, boundaries, um, you know, limiting beliefs and concepts about pretty much everything. And as we know, like business is really about relationship at the end of the day, whether it's with yourself, with your team members, with your um, clients, with your customers, everything. And so uh, if that's not tip top, then it's difficult to like proceed and, and actually be sustainable and successful. I love everything you just said. Love it. You said the phrase, um, speak your truth. I know that's super important to you and a foundational piece of your brand, your business and everything you're up to. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, I think that it's so important to talk about it as a concept because uh, speaking one's truth as a concept before we actually get into the nitty gritty of what it looks like, Mm -hmm. because I think that there's a lot of misinterpretations about speaking your truth and being unapologetic and being a bad bitch. Like it doesn't mean just being unfiltered and undisciplined and saying whatever comes through your mind. It means actually having, like for me at least, like I have a morning practice. I'm praying every morning. I'm connecting with uh, with the universe, with God, whatever name you want to call it. I'm filtering my thoughts through a practice that I, you know, to, to work with any thoughts based in fear, any thoughts based in friction, relationship friction and any limiting beliefs. Yes. So that I am actually, my thoughts are going through a filtered system. So by the time people are hearing them, if I'm being disciplined about what I'm speaking, I know it's my truth because I've checked up on it. Mm-hmm. I'm not just being like, I hate that bitch, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talking, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, so, so to me, speaking my truth means that I've aligned my behavior and my thoughts with my values. And like, I'm not perfectionist about it. I mean, God knows, like somebody says something and I'll get mad and I'll be like, you know, first I'm human and I'm going to be like, five minutes to talk about how, what the fuck, Mm -hmm. but then after that going in and really looking at like, why did I, why did, why did this bother me so much? Or like, is this my truth or am I just defensive about something because of a childhood trauma that's unresolved? Mm -hmm. So, and when I say childhood trauma, I'm not talking about events that have occurred. I'm talking about my nervous system's reactions to various events that can occur in childhood. It doesn't Mm -hmm. necessarily mean it's like, you know, a major event, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, It could just be an ongoing feeling of being suppressed, um, not being able to to be fully self-expressed, especially for girls that shows up. Mm-hmm. Um, we're told to be quiet. We're told like, you're so yeah. pretty. You're so creative. Yeah. I had no fucking clue I was going to be a great business owner. Right. Nobody was like, you're going to be a great business owner one day. You're really going to make some, make a cool ass business. Nobody mm-hmm. ever said that. That was a result of doing the work, right? Yes. But um. And that was a result of finding and basically being forced in, into it by way of wanting to make an offering and then looking at like, what is my truth within this? Yeah, I love that. And it's it's so related to branding because of the value piece and like how you want to show up. And I, I love that you made this distinction between kind of just being you know, off the cuff saying whatever, which is kind of very like an ego driven place versus like, let me connect, let me align. And then from that place, then I start to speak because your audience can feel it when it's one way or the other, you know, even if you're feeling on the timid side, your audience can feel it. So it's, I love that you made that distinction that it's not just like, Oh, I'm going to speak my truth. I'm just going to say whatever comes to me, whenever I want. Um, kind of in a tantrum situation (laughs) versus like I'm really actually connected when I am speaking from this place yeah and I can look back I've always been someone who loves like authenticity like Mm -hmm. from a very young age I'm drawn to authenticity I'm drawn to truth um you know comedy is so important to me because Mm -hmm. it's all about like telling the (laughs) talking of bringing bringing light to the darkness and that Mm -hmm. sort of thing um but I look back even, so I have a friend who's also in, um, you know, is, do, does spiritual work and we've been, we've been best friends for years mm-hmm. and we were looking back at one point at our old like Facebook messages from 15, 
at this point, my God, like literally almost 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And they were so mean. We were like, oh my God, that was so mean. Mm -hmm. And we just thought that we were, you know, just like speaking the, speaking the truth, mm -hmm. but it was really, it wasn't aligned with values to speak to the branding. Like that wasn't my truth. That was just my unfiltered like judgments. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like when you, that's why your branding work is such spiritual work, because if I align what my truth with my values, you know, that include things like self-expression, humor, community, love, those sorts of things, like then I'm not going to, it changes what my truth is. Right? Yeah. It changes. It. Yes. Yes. The, the, the message gets shifted into, I think a higher energy, really the energetics oh. change. I love this. I love this. This is so good. Um, <laughs> as I'm sure many are always like the topic of money is always very interesting to everybody. And uh, like, you know, we all want more of it. It's a loose, it can be elusive to a lot of people. Like if you had to impart, you know, your, your wisdom on that piece specifically, like what would you say is super important to know, or how do you like get people to realize what they're you know, money energy is and open that up for people? Oh my gosh. Well, I know it's a big question. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this was such a big one for me because first of all, I was raised around a lot of financial fear mm -hmm. and a lot of um, can really yeah, like a lot of folks, a lot of us are. And so, um, in terms of like what had to change for me, I would say, the three major things are one, looking at my money, mm -hmm. really looking at what exactly I'm bringing in. I couldn't even have told you how much I made a year mm -hmm. at a certain point. I had no clue. I mean, I knew vaguely like, mm -hmm. but it was like, it was like, it's either this number or double that. I don't know. <laughs> right. But everything's working. Yeah. So <laughs> wasn't working. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was like, I said no to so many things because I didn't have enough money. And, you know, we're told not to talk about money. We're told it's unbecoming. We're told it's like trashy to talk about money. And, you know, we're raised, I, I was at least raised around a lot of those beliefs and that it's certainly unbecoming to desire money, mm -hmm. right? Like that's a, it's, especially if you're a spiritual teacher, my God, you're not even supposed to care about money mm -hmm. and money's just a construct and it like doesn't exist, but money makes life possible. It makes experiences possible. It makes important research possible. I mean, there's really important elements of having access to cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that I had to do was actually face it because I was so scared. I literally had a closet full of bills, like a closet where I would chuck my, like the mail, yeah. I, I have a mail closet. And I had to literally open up the closet and like put them, I sat on the couch and stacked up the mail and one by one started opening them and facing the truth. Yeah. I like, I'm a Google sheet person. Now I literally write down everything I spend and I look at all outgoing um, or all incoming money too. Mm -hmm. And so really addressing, looking at the money, that's number one. Yeah. Um, the second part was dealing with the energetics of money, which looking at the money certainly helps, right? Right. It's it, it like created the opening for the next piece. Yes. And then, you know, we live in an abundant universe. So if I write down on outgoing money, if I'm, I'm planning my outgoing money, I don't believe in budgets. My God, that would like never you work. You hear that everybody? No budget. No, no. budget. Oh. Like talk about your budgets. Yeah. Okay. I will never. You no. Right here. Why? Like, what, like, like, because there's a better way. Because there's a, we just make more money. Mm -hmm. Just make more money. But if my belief is that there's only a finite amount of money and that I have to choose, I hear so often, there's so much bullshit about money out there. One is that what's going to make me more money? Oh, just time. I just need more time to build. Like it's never, you never need more time. You can make more, you can make money right now today. You can make $10,000 by the end of the month, you know? Um, and, um, and then what was the other thing? Oh, why don't I believe in budgets? Yeah. Oh, because um, I don't, I first of all, cannot follow one to save my life. And <laughs> I think, I'm just pointing this out because I think a lot of people, myself included, really relate to this. Like, oh man, a budget, like what an energy drain. And like, I, it's hard for me to stick to them too. And I, I just, I know I love what you're saying. So yeah. 
Yeah. And, um, and that you can, we live in an abundant universe. There is more money. Yes. So, and you can have it now and you can receive it. And when I, when I write down my, how much money um, is going to be outgoing mm -hmm. to me, that's like a prayer to yeah. me. That's like saying to the universe, I call it my money expander is actually my outgoing money mm -hmm. because I expand how much incoming money I have by communicating to the universe, how much money I desire to have I for specific that. things in yeah. my life. Yeah. Right. Um, you, so can yeah, I say something? Okay, because yeah, we yeah. talked about this maybe mm, I don't know, like two months ago. I was like, mm -hmm. Cassie, what do you do exactly? <laughs> and you kind of walked me through this process of like figure out what it is that you desire, find out how much it costs and when you want to create it by. And that's like you putting in, you know, your order into the universe. And that's like the money expansion that you're talking about. I Am I right? Totally. And I when I'm wrong. In my right, yes. And when I'm in my right mind, I have no fear around it. When I'm in my right mind, I trust completely because I just genuinely believe. And it's also my experience that, that I always receive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it doesn't like all of the stories, like I'm a woman, I'm a, this kind of woman, you know, like that, that I can't receive because for certain yeah. reasons that it will be harder for me because I'm a spiritual teacher, but, you know, because there's a pandemic, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I get to let all that go. Mm -hmm. And I get to just say, well, what if I'm available for it? And that none of that, what if none of that were true? Mm -hmm. And the truth is that it's always available. My job is then to create some sort of offer of value to mm -hmm. give of myself, what I, whatever gifts I have. Yep. Yep. Oh. And that's gold, you guys gold. But like, this is where the, part, this is the part where the real growth comes in because mm -hmm. yeah, like getting down to what we desire, that's fun. I know it can be hard for some folks and that's totally okay. If it's hard to get to what you desire, you will figure it out. Um, for me, the really hard part was putting it out there mm -hmm. into the, like actually offering mm -hmm. because I was so embarrassed to charge money. Yeah. So Ooh. embarrassed. I don't and think like, you're alone on that one too. It's just hard. Like, oh, what, what do you, because embarrassed is a very um, particular word. Like what felt embarrassing about it? Well, I think, so this brings me to like the second really important lesson mm -hmm. that I have to learn. Look at us creating a one, two, three. I love it. <laughs> through a story part. still, <laughs> through brand story, because you're weaving your story throughout the whole thing. You guys, this is like a little brand trick. She doesn't even know she was doing it. <laughs> So she's like telling the one, two, three, but weaving her own brand story into the lesson. I just want you to take note of that from like a brand storytelling perspective. Okay, proceed. <laughs> yes. And Jessica just visited my mastermind, mm -hmm. Money Metaphysics for Maverick Women. And so I'm like using what Jessica taught during that session nice. to share with you right now. Nice. How we're working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah love okay. it. So, <laughs> so so I was really embarrassed because I had tons of beliefs about, for, first of all, my line of business, like second of all, my getting to decide how much I would value my own work. I was used to other people telling me how much I was worth. Mm -hmm. And something that really changed my life was, and Josh, I'm sorry for listening. <laughs> <laughs> and also thank you. <laughs> but I was my friend Josh had an incredible tutoring business. Mm -hmm. And um I like he was just an incredible businessman. And I was a worked for him as a tutor. Mm -hmm. And one time I learned that the amount that he was charging for my services was a lot more than what. I was getting paid. Now, because I was not a business person at the time, it did not even occur to me that he was taking a cut, which was so silly, which of course he was. Like, of course, which is How else is he going to make money? <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But then it was so helpful to me because I was like, oh my God, like this time I'm spending with this person is like twice the amount of value then I thought I was worth, I thought I was this much per, per hour, but apparently I'm, I'm, and then I was also like, oh shit, I should be showing up at that level. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that helped me tr tr uh, transform how much I saw myself 
worth in terms of value. Mm -hmm. Um, But also it was scary and embarrassing because I was going to have to say, when you make your own business, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm creating this. Like I'm a creator. I'm literally creating something from whole cloth Mm -hmm. that like nobody else has created. They've created other versions of it, but nobody else has created this. Not like you. Not like you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like, I'm then going to tell you how much I am going to charge for you to come do this thing that I made up. Mm -hmm. That sounded insane to me. It literally sounded so insane. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, I had to like confront all of these fears and beliefs Mm -hmm. and all of my feelings of anger, not good enough, um, being compared to all my judgments about people with money. Yes all my judgments about businesses, yes. um, how businesses operated and that sort of thing. And so I, that was energetic work. Yeah. Yep. So the th- second thing that I had to do to transform my relationship with money was the energetic work mm-hmm. of, of neutralizing and overcoming all of my fears around money, charging, like owning my value, speaking up, telling people I'm offering something. Mm-hmm. Second of all, my resentments toward past business owners and, and um, people who I perceived as having money and what I thought they thought of me. I thought people liked me better because I was broke. I was like, they won't, people won't like me if I'm not broke. That's like part of why do people like me? Yes. Because I, I always have a lot of rich friends. Yeah. But I was like, they think I'm scrappy and like- Yeah, you know. and I gotta, I gotta stick to that persona in order yeah. to stay in the group. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm, and I was also an artist and an activist. So like that world was not about making a lot of money, at least the, the, my particular community, we made fun of people with money. Right. And so like, I had to do my energetic work around my beliefs about that. Yeah. And so I teach the, I teach something called the practice to help people transform their energy around that and really get connected to their, their truth. Yeah. I love this. I love this. So first open up all the bills and take a look, open up your bank account, take a look, see what's actually coming in, monitor it. Don't necessarily need a budget, just need to get clear on the energetics around and eliminate those fears. Yes. And so the first is the, is the right looking at your money. Second is, is um, transforming your energy mm-hmm. around money. And that's an, all this is an ongoing process. Yes. Like I get to graduate every new level new level, new devil or whatever, right, like right. <laughs> new, new beliefs show up where I'm like, oh, oh apparently I have that belief. Uh-huh. And then um, the third thing that I really had to look at, and this was so shocking to me, and this goes back to um, concepts around people pleasing, codependency, yes. and how that shows up in our finances. Mm-hmm. And what that looks like was realizing that so much of the stuff that I thought was me being nice was actually not that nice. Yeah. It wasn't being of highest service. So for example, for years, I had been working with people without charging anything. Mm-hmm. I was spending hours, like not like, obviously I'm, you know, in a sober community and that's, that's totally, totally different, sacred yeah. work. I just don't want to make any, um, confusion there in case people are familiar. Um, but just like my friends who just need, you know, and, uh, all sorts of people would recommend people. And I would literally spend, make times to meet with people for hours Mm -hmm. on end that I'd never met before to coach them through, to guide them through certain situations in their lives and not charge and not charge a dime. And I did that for years. Wow. And what I now know because I've seen my business transform as I have raised my rates. And each time is a journey, like a vibrational journey for me. It's a journey to move through fear and to really like practice what I preach. Mm-hmm. I've realized that so many of those, those things like undercharging friend deals. Yeah. Um, Trade. All, yeah. Yeah. First of all, friend mm-hmm. deals, we don't show up the way we would if we were getting no. paid the amount no. we want to charge and then we get resentful and then yep. we back out so that's first of all second mm-hmm. is um you know undercharging then we don't show up at the level that we would if you're yep. charging a good like a strong rate you're going to show up like a fucking bat out of hell yeah and like guarantee that yeah. people are you're bringing you. your a a a a a plus plus plus, plus. yes exactly <laughs> yes. and and also more importantly they are yes 
Yes. I love that phrase. Like the transformation happens in the transaction. Cause when I'm, if money's just energy, money's just a currency, money's just a tool. And i have like put a lot of the, of the energy into a container in which I'm like working with you, working with someone, it, then you, you bet your sweet bippy, I'm going to show up to the call <laughs> with my questions and my notepad. And it's like, it's like having a membership to the gym versus having a membership to the gym and also paying for a personal trainer who's like sitting there yes. waiting for you to kick your butt and get you in shape. And it's like when you've made that investment, not only of your money, your energy and your time, and you know, someone else is making an investment in you. Oh my God, that changes everything. So yeah, I love exactly. That. And not only that, but like, I love, I love what you just said. And when I am going to charge a higher rate, I'm also going to continually invest in myself to make sure that I am showing up so clear that I'm, sh- and I'm going to do the work before I even show up to the calls. I'm going to like, like as a, as a teacher, I'm going to, I'm going to do all that to continue to make sure that I'm growing. Yeah. Right. So it's like such a synergetic, like we all need each other. It's all, we all need each other. And the money is just like a symbol that, that kicks our ass. And (laughs) exactly. I love that. Oh my God. We've already covered so much. I love that one, two, three. Let's write that down somewhere. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, Yeah. So helpful. So helpful. Like, so what do you think? um, Where do I want to go with this? Like what feels the, like, what do you love about the work that you do? Mm, well, I, I love, love, love seeing. So first of all, I'm like on, whenever I'm teaching something, I'm on fire with it. Like I run on fire. Ran on, on fire. fire. <laughs> See? Like, I, I can't wait to share it with them because it's something that just transformed my life. Mm-hmm. So, um, so getting to like, see what happens to, with someone else mm-hmm. in their life, when they're starting to put the same principles into action and they start to see, you know, the money pile up in their, their bank account. And then, and then also getting to, to be in this, this synergetic, I was just talking about this, but like this relationship, this yeah. symbiotic relationship where we are really getting to sharpen each other, where, where somebody, you know, my clients have already just gone, they've, I've just gone through something and then they're going through it. And then I get to share with them. Right. Yeah. So really getting to see how we're like, like spiritual teachings in action. We're all one, all minds are joined. And over and over again, I get to witness the abundance of the universe. I get to witness it through these like special yeah. souls. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it sounds like you get to co-create with people mm-hmm. and like up level, up level, up level. Yeah. And it's a collaboration. Like mm-hmm. I'm not like, Oh, I'm teaching you, you know, it's just like, yeah. it's just this incredible collaboration that we get to do. I love it. I love it. Ooh. Okay. Any other like tidbits you want to share with, with us today that just really light up your life, light up your business that you wish like everybody knew. <laughs> yes, actually. So I think that for me, like the most important thing that I can do for any area of my life for full self-expression, to be who I came here to be, to, to have the courage to be a bad bitch or a maverick mm-hmm. or whoever it is that you really came here to be is that practice in the morning of really like tuning into myself before I check my cell phone, before other people's thoughts are getting into my head, before I'm trying to meet demands on me to really tune in with meditation, to make that a Mm -hmm. non-negotiable with prayer. If you're somebody who prays, it doesn't have to be to anything in particular. It can be to like, you know, the universe or Mm -hmm. to a tree, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then to, to really like know that there's a way through any fear mm-hmm. and there's a way through any relationship friction and through any, any reason I'm giving myself that I can't do something. There's always a way and it's all possible. It's always a way and it's always possible. And you connect to that the most and build on it through your morning connections. Everybody yeah. have a morning routine. <laughs> 
don't know. How, I honestly don't know how people do it without I don't, one. Without one, I don't either. I don't either. I really well, don't. It's off, really, with people who can. I it. mean, it feels like it would be really hard. I know I in- integrated a morning routine into my life like over ten years ago, um, and it you know it varies and changes each morning. But it is one of the things that just fuels my fire and like gets me connected gives me answers gives me clarity gives me peace what is yours I did a whole podcast episode on it but very (laughs) very briefly like I'll I I like to have two hours of space Mm -hmm. in the morning and I recently, this might actually contradict the podcast episode I recorded, <laughs> but I love it. It doesn't matter. I now don't assign myself anything to necessarily do during those two hours because that felt constricting to me versus free. But usually I'll do some combination of reading, writing, and meditation and physical movement. And it's usually one of those, all of those, a combination in whatever order I decide Cause that was really important to me just to have the freedom to like, not have to like check off a to-do list in my, in my morning routine and my spiritual time. So yeah. um, that's my like little brief, brief synopsis, but definitely go listen to the podcast episode about it. Yes. Yes. And I have to say also like anybody I know who is successful financially and living a joyful life mm-hmm. is doing is, is doing a morning routine that looks yeah. something like that, like reading, meditation, writing. Yes. Movement. It's not just to look powerful on the gram, you guys. It really actually is important. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. And like, not to get too woo, but money comes from your consciousness. I like agree. money, money doesn't, it's not, and this is like something I decided to leave this to the end because <laughs> I love it. But I love it. You know, this is this is so important and it's so hard to understand before you've tested it. So anything that you've heard today that you were like, hmm, maybe, or even if you're like, that sounds like bullshit, Mm -hmm. just go test it and see. Like decide for yourself by testing it. And one of the things um is that money is only responding to my vibration. It's only responding to my energy, which I am in full control over by doing that morning practice, right? By really look, examining my thoughts and my beliefs and then deciding to have new ones. And um, money comes from my consciousness. So that's why I never have to worry about it anymore because I can just always, always transform any part of my consciousness that thinks that there's not enough of it. Yes. If you were just like, what? Or you're like, yeah, but my <laughs> CPA said, or my financial, <laughs> said, and, and, and not, and no disrespect to those professions whatsoever. Like just test this out. Cause I couldn't agree with you more when my energy is where it needs to be crazy, weird alignment stuff start like out of the blue, like someone I talked to 10 years ago, I was like, you know, I've been wanting to call you and I really want to work with you now, or I'll do something over here, not get a response there, but like, oh, tidal wave in some completely different area, unexpected. So I agree. And, you know, you, like, like Cassie said, put it to the test, but as much as they want you to think one plus one equals two, when it comes to money, it doesn't. <laughs> So true. And that is also my exact experience. I can't tell you how many times I have, you know, you're taking the actions because we still have to take the, the, the actions, right? It's not yeah. like we can meditate all day. We're still, we're getting up off the meditation cushion and sending emails or just going out and serving in whatever way. Mm-hmm. And it so often comes through the back door, some yeah. random magic, magic. I couldn't have said it better. Magic is definitely the word that comes to mind. So I love this so much. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. Cassie, you're amazing. Um, where can, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell, ask you where people can find out more about you. And then I have one last question. So okay. where can fi- people find you? Where can they get into your um, precious bubble? You can find me on Instagram at Cassie Underwood. It's K A. S S I no E K not a C K A S S I 
Underwood, like Carrie Underwood. Um, and then CassieUnderwood.com. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes as well. So people can totally find you. And if there's, um, yeah, definitely go to her website. She's, she's bad. I mean, she's married. She's married. She's interviewed Marion <laughs> Williamson, like crazy, amazing people in the space. Like you guys, this, you need to follow Cassie. She's amazing. So maybe a hard question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What do you think is your brand on fire? Oh my God. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> like uh, what makes your brand feel like fire to you? Oh, you know what it is? It's, um, it's like being a maverick. It's really, that's, a, that's like the heart of it is like all the, all the inner work, all of that is to get down to listening to that voice within mm-hmm. and that voice within is not a rule follower is not a crowd follower. The voice within is a bad bitch and you never know where she's going to take you. And that's really the heart and soul of it. I love it so much, Cassie. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. You dropped so many pearls of wisdom. You guys go experiment with your life and with everything, Cassie. Um, And you don't have to make a budget. How exciting is that? (laughs) unless you really want to, unless you're really into that. Um, so I am just so such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. I adore you. I I just appreciate you as a fellow business entrepreneur and as a friend and as like an energy sister. So hats off to you. Same. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. It was such an honor. Absolutely.